Hi, welcome to chapter 3 of so the second SARS tutorial. This chapter is the last chapter of this tutorial and we'll explore the site recordings that we processed in uh, chapters 1 and 2 and have a look at mapping the uh, group content. The site we recorded was GR43 as our example and to find it you can either search for it in your in the search bar and uh, hopefully this achieves a result. Yeah, there it is. Um, and remember the field we used for the PDF was a private field, a secure docs field. Uh, as I'm logged in as the user that uploaded the PDF I should have access to it. Um, yeah, there we go. If I log out perhaps and um, show you what happens if I don't have rights to that file it'll do following. Let's search for that again. So you'll notice it will show the result. Um, when I choose the PDF I don't have access to it. Going back to the site, as I'm not a member of that group with this username, I'll also be unauthorized to that uh, particular node. This is a little different to the other areas of the, of the site where certain fields have been restricted but as long as I'm in the same user rights group um, I have access to other content types from other users who have the same rights. With organic groups I might have the same right as, as another site recorder but if I'm not a member of the same group I can't access the full content nodes unless they've been made public. Let's log out and log back in as the user that created the sample node. Find our site. And go back in there. Right. The uh, completed content we've already explored uh, at this stage there's no need to worry about gradings, locations, just to note that locations are sub areas of a site and that's useful if for instance you have a shipwreck and you'd like to define the site as the wreck and different locations within that site perhaps where the anchor fell and uh, different parts of the, the boat um, and uh, in archaeological sites you might have the Taylor slope as a location and the overhang as another location within the same site. Um, <coughs> this also works for building sites um, where you might define the site by the, the complex and you'd like to specify different locations by the barn or the, the warehouse areas and so forth. Um, not commonly used, it's often just as easy to create new sites for each one of the sub-locations, so uh, it's an optional uh, way of using it. Uh, the gradings, this comes in when you are grading the site for the first time, um, and depending on your user rights you'll see different links um, on, the, on the site. Um, let's go to the mapping now. Um, we've created our site, we can edit it of course if we want to correct it, but often we'd like to check that the, the mapping has been done correctly. The first check is the actual nodes. So the GMAP module will show the, the map in the location info tab. You may have noticed there was a detailed mapping tab under the um, site in chapter one and that is the open layers module which allows you to map a, a polygon area for a site. Um, this will be dealt with at a much later stage um, at the stage we are focusing on mapping sites by a lat long coordinate um, and not treating them the same way as heritage cases which use the open layers module. The uh, GMAP module you can explore, um, it give you the various options that we've already covered and um, generally this is all you need to do to check whether the site was correctly mapped. However you might want to browse your whole groups site content and to do that you go to explore sites organic group sites and depending on your user rights you will see the the sites in your group 
and you can either view them in table view and filter out the current use that I'm working on for, for instance um, by specifying the username um, this would give me a map for instance if I click on the, the map view of those sites that this user has created and you'll see the one node we did is the demo down at Cape Point and then other nodes up in the Cedarburg remember shift hold down the shift key and draw a box with your mouse to zoom into that area and again this is bringing up the open layers module view and picking a, a particular preset that I specified and you can choose the uh, 1 in 250,000 map of South Africa um, or the 1 in 50,000 map um, that will give you property boundaries in the area that you are interested in even the municipalities uh, all the provinces and district councils and so on so these are quite useful um, the old magisterial districts if you working with those as well, those are also available. Um, and then the, the various maps, the physical map and so on and so forth. You can view the full screen view or back to normal view. Uh, and then the zoom button on the left is pretty self-explanatory and you can move left and right manually or simply drag the mouse, click and drag to move the map left and right up and down. Um, each site has a a bubble if you click on the the node I'm not going to zoom in any cl any closer than this um, to uh, preserve the site locations that are uh, in there um, but you can of course zoom much closer in if you have the user rights uh, let's click on a node very very simple there's the site number and it describes the site categories that were listed in the site so we might right click and go to that site maybe pick the other one, as this one has rock art artifacts and stone walling and these sites are then available you can then view all the relevant information that was captured this site recording should be fairly interesting there's the full array of images as an example and this one has the map and the property name and it can go to the site recording and it also has a number of images available the um, the map can be filtered in as well. So you in the map view, you can choose um, sites beginning with uh, a certain text f um, query. So let's filter that in all the GR2s, and then it's it's much more specific. So those are only sites um, captured by that user, starting with GR2. Um, and again the offsets we've covered in chapter one uh, if you had a list of hundreds of sites you can skip through uh, the first number of sites that you specify in the offset field uh, remember that the open layers view is um, limited to 50 site matches per query the table view this doesn't apply you can um, go back to the table view and you can change the items per page to all or 100 um, and that will then allow you to see a long list of sites if need be but the map view will only allow you to do 50 at a time so uh, find the area in the query that you're interested in and uh, map accordingly that is uh, just about it for organic groups um, we will cover setting up organic groups in another tutorial uh, for site administrators managing their own groups and the different options you have for, for membership to those groups. Thank you.